Welcome back to the series on searching and sorting. In this part, we present a more efficient sorting algorithm, QuickSort. From the previous part, it's clear that we need a better, more efficient sorting algorithm. Lots of efficient sorting algorithms exist, but we'll focus on one called QuickSort. As the name implies, it's fairly efficient. We won't go too deeply into the details of the algorithm's implementations. Instead, we'll give you a high-level idea of how it works. Even with this algorithm, there are many different variations that we could get into that are beyond the scope of this video series. Essentially, quicksort is a basic divide and conquer strategy. So we'll look at it from the perspective of recursion. The first step is to choose a pivot element. A pivot is a central point around which things rotate. We then partition elements around this pivot element, placing smaller elements to the left and larger elements to the right. Finally, we place the pivot element between the left and right partitions. Since everything to its left is less than the pivot and everything to its right is greater than the pivot, the pivot element ends up being exactly where it needs to be in the sorted array. We then recursively run quicksort on the left and right halves until the entire array is sorted. Let's look at a brief demonstration. Now there are lots of ways to choose a different pivot element, but we'll keep it simple and use the element at the start of the array. We then proceed to examine all the other elements in the array. Two is less, so it goes on the left. 62 is greater, so it goes to the right. Seven is less, so it goes to the left, and so on, until all elements have been placed where they need to be. Finally, the pivot element is placed in the middle. We observe that everything to the left is less than 42, and everything to the right is greater, so 42 is actually where it needs to be. We then recurse on each side of the array, passing in left and right index parameters to keep track of which subarray we're sorting. The recursion stops when the subarray that we're sorting is of size zero or one, which by definition is sorted. Again, we won't go into the details here, but you could look at this from a best case, worst case, or average case analysis. Without going into the details, quicksort in the, both the best case and the average case can be shown to make roughly n log n comparisons. This is much better than the n squared behavior of selection sort. Let's look at this analysis with the same perspectives that we use with selection sort. First, we'll suppose that we want to sort a database of 1 trillion records. This leads to roughly 40 trillion comparisons. Now this is a lot, but that's much less than selection sort. Again, running on the same hardware at 11.3 teraflops, it would only require 3.5 seconds to sort the data. This is very feasible compared to selection sort's 14 century runtime. From another perspective, consider doubling the input size of an array, going from an array of size n to an array of size 2n. The number of comparisons will also grow, but when we simplify this expression, we get that quicksort actually only requires about twice as many comparisons. There is an additional additive linear term here, so it's not exactly a linear algorithm. But still, as a good estimate, it's roughly only twice as many. Often these sort of n log n algorithms are referred to as quasi-linear or almost linear. Quicksort is a much better algorithm, but when you actually need to search or sort in practice, you almost never write your own sorting implementations. This is what we're going to focus on in the next part.